Hello, this is Pat from Pixel Notes Music. I'm gonna try to make my first long episode. I guess I should uh, try to summarize what these episodes will be about. All I'm gonna focus on is the palette of sounds within these keyboards. Uh, I really like the concept of getting this little box of sounds, discovering what it contains, and then creating something using only the given tools. This episode features the Casio Tone CT510. It's the bigger sibling of the MT500 and MT520 mini keyboards. Back in the day it came with uh, external drum pads that you could plug into your keyboard. Unfortunately I don't have those, but you can get those on eBay I think. However, I do have a couple of these. Casio SS1 drumsticks. Alright, so first impression. Uh, by the way, I haven't tried this keyboard before. Uh, I got it a few weeks ago for 30 euros or something like that, and uh, I just opened the package. Uh, I got rid of the usual ABCD stickers and uh, gave it a good scrub. So, what is my first impression? Well, I'm a sucker for big colorful drum pads. I really like getting creative with those using a loop pedal. I'll start with the sound. So first we have a piano. It's your typical lo-fi Casio piano. We've got vibraphone. It's uh, quite a full and warm sound. I like it. Uh, jazz organ. Violin. Yeah, that's uh, quite a nice sound. Very grand. Trumpet. Eh. Funky clav. Quite flat and lifeless. We've got electric piano. Nope, don't like that. We've got electric guitar. Quite boring as well. All these sounds have some kind of uh, default sustain on them. Pipe organ. That's quite nice as well. I might use this. Human voice. Quite a soft voiced human.
We've got flute. That's pretty lush as well. I like it. We've got synth sound. I wonder what that sounds like. Of course. Generic synth sound. Some kind of sawtooth pad. All right, let's go to the drum pad section. We've got bass drum, rim shot, hand clap, snare drum, high bongo, hi hat, low bongo, cymbal. On top of looking awesome, they're quite nice and responsive. I wonder what the sliders do. Will they change the sound? Nope. Uh, maybe they have something to do with the drum beats. Let's go to the rhythm section. Hmm. It's not working. That's weird. Oh, I get it now. These are different patterns for the different drums. All right, let's go through them. Uh, you've got bass drum. You can actually change these mid beat which is quite nice. Oh yeah, the lowest one says manual. So I guess if you put it on manual, you can play along by hand. Alright, let's also go through the different uh, beats. So we've got Rock One, and we've got Pops. Um, I'm not gonna go through all of the patterns, I'm just gonna keep it on the first one. Disco. Alright, I think this is the same beat as in the CT360. I've used this in a previous song. Samba, March, Rock 2, Reggae, 16 beats. Um, this beat was also in the CT360, and uh, you might recognize it if you're familiar with the band Beach House, because it was featured in the song Wild from their album Bloom. I think it's the same uh, bank of drum beats as in the 360. Uh, and finally, slow rock, bossa nova, and waltz. 
All right, let's grab the drumsticks. These go back here. Let's put it to symbol. Uh, this means that you can play symbol anywhere. And this button closes the hi-hat. I'll plug this one into the bass drum and snare. It's very responsive. So this one controls the bass drum and snare. And uh, the remaining two inputs uh, control the, the rim shot and the hand clap, as well as the high bongo and low bongo. Now, saying all this, I don't know how you'd actually use these, because uh, no one plays drums like this. So you have to basically relearn playing drums. And it requires a little bit of coordination. I guess the easier option would actually be to just take these out and uh, play them as regular drumsticks on the small drum pads. Alright, I guess all I have left to do is to make a song. Hope you like it. <laughs>